You can also listen to us on SoundCloud at soundcloud.com forward slash the clock cleaners. Hello and welcome to episode 23 of the Clock Cleaners podcast. I'm Matt. And I'm Keith. And today we're going to be talking about what was better than the last few weeks. How about what we're going to talk about is that cruiserweights on both shows were treated as actual human beings. Um... Yeah. They both had matches with somebody from a different division. Well, I was going to say the Leo Rush one wasn't taken as seriously. Well, no. But still at the same time. The match did. was booked. Yeah. It happened. It ended. Regardless, it was... I mean, it got two things technically done. Uh-huh. I mean, you furthered the whole Heath Slater thing since he is now a referee. Yeah, I, I like. I kind of like what they're doing. Because yeah, it's not if, bad. Because what you're doing is you're adding an, another element to the mm-hmm. horrible, horrible, horrible well, Baron Corbin story. See, my thing would have been, I don't know, we're just going to kind of randomly go into it here because uh-huh. it happened throughout the show. But you have this happen a couple weeks in a row. Mm-hmm. Or you have this the match take place with him and Rhino maybe two or three weeks ago. Have him win, be a referee for a couple weeks. He gains Corbin's trust of being working for him. Mm-hmm. Then have Corbin appoints him as the referee in his match with him and Braun. Braun comes out, you know, selling his injuries still, and you have Heath screw Braun, uh, Baron. Baron over. So what you're saying is this should have happened a little earlier? Yeah, if, if that's how, just to play it out that I, way. I think that they can still do that. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Because he ult- ref two matches on Monday. Yeah, and he didn't cause Corbin to lose. Mm-mm. He, if anything, he helped him almost yeah. win um, on Raw. <clears throat> so, but I, I like what they're doing with that just because I like Heath Slater. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking about this during Raw. Mm-hmm. Um, like, starting with Rollins coming out and complaining how Raw has sucked because of Baron Corbin. Yeah, so, yeah, let, let, let's talk about that. But I'll let you finish what you were saying first. Well, basically, what I was what I was going to say is that, like, well, A, Rollins is basically talking to Vince. Right. Well, he's being the internet. He's representing the internet, yeah. and Corbin is Vince. Yeah. And they're just trolling the hell out of us. Yeah, pretty much, because Vince is Go basically on. saying that, you I know, know this shit sucks, yeah. but you're still going to watch yeah, it. Yeah, pretty much. Well... <laughs> apparently not but well he yes. just doesn't care that's that's really what it is the third um, hour almost dropped below two million yeah so my biggest problem is i have no problem with the terrible heel authority figure yeah. but the issue is he's not against anybody he's there's no well, co- cohesive there's no guy that's gonna topple him like austin did with Vince? Yeah, like Roman was not too long ago. So, there's no... Because, like, I guess you can kind of say it's Balor, but Balor's been preoccupied with other things. Well, I thought things. it was Braun. Wasn't it just meant to be set up with Corbin and Braun? Kind of, but they kind of... Well, since went, he got injured, yeah, it, I guess they should have just probably scrapped the yeah, whole that, thing. That would have made more sense. But, that again, that's the problem. Uh, well, they're, the, they're going forward with it without the actual... Right, and, and it's funny because we complain that they scrap things too fast and they don't see things through but then they find an angle like this that isn't working and completely see it through (laughs) because like usually they'll they'll i guess scrap stuff like that seems like has potential Mm -hmm. even though like they just i guess don't see it right but this time there's no potential it's garbage but they just keep on doing it. I full think, force. I think it's really Vince saying, I really don't care. I'm just going to do whatever I, mean, I want. There was rumors that he, what, completely rewrote the script? The last, the last two, two weeks. weeks. And last week it was they wanted to make the show happy because of the passing of George Bush. So Because oh. it was taking place in Texas. So yeah. that's why we saw so many Finn what? Balor and so many segments standing tall. I guess that makes I sense. I mean, it, it adds up. It sounds absolutely stupid, but, I mean, it adds up and it sounds like Vince McMahon logical thinking in his mind anyway yeah he is nuts. So, yeah but uh anyway uh, uh, and but just i don't know again seth i obviously i guess he's your focal point for raw he well, is the main guy he, he is the people's champion yeah and, so and it, i know it's like the rock yeah thing, yeah no, i got you. it theoretically speaking that's what he is yeah so i guess just you know it was just weird yeah it it, it i don't know it because <laughs> The problem was the fact that you had Rollins having something else going on yeah. at the time. And that wasn't even that good. No. With Ambrose, like, it just seems like, I don't know, like, you have Ambrose on Raw doing his thing, and then you have Daniel Bryan on SmackDown doing his thing, and they're kind of running parallel, I guess Yeah, they're you could pretty say. much the same. Yeah, but Bryan has such a 
better message and reason for him to be well, mad there, at there's people. no cohesive reason and for ambrose ambrose could have just like simply said i've been doing you know sticking together with you guys because of roman and now mm. that roman's gone i've got no reason to be you know something like that yeah instead he just <sighs> Uh, it changes week to week yeah there's no there's no consistency right (laughs) and then again that's something we're saying they're not seeing something through and Mm -hmm. changing it yeah um i mean yeah it was funny because uh i guess jimmy jacobs wrote on twitter today he said you know like i get the hate but writing a three-hour show every single week is not easy and that's obviously (laughs) true yeah but again it's it's minor things Mm mm-hmm like, a lot of times, and, you know, I complain about this with Impact sometimes, too, is that you get random matches that happen, and you're like, you could just do one simple thing for that match to happen. Just have a small backstage segment, and there's a reason for the match. Not yeah. just, oh, here's going to be a match tonight. Mm-hmm. We're going to see this. Like with Daniel Bryan and Mustafa Ali. It was announced beforehand. Why didn't they just have, like, something small that the led show. to Ali coming out or something like that? Yeah, well, that's kind of well, what they did. I, I know, but, but they already said that the match was going to happen. Okay. And, you know. Yeah. So what you're saying is you prefer justification instead of there being, like, a competitive element? I mean, to an extent. Because what I see with that is that it's, uh, like, you know, what would normally be considered a regular sport right. where you have people Compete, not right. f- facing each other for no reason because that's what sports are supposed to be. Right. I think we've talked about this yeah. before. Where I liked it back in the day when they used to have just random matches that didn't mean anything. There was no feud going on, yeah. and that's where the feud But start. the problem is, is that WWE time and again has told us wins and losses don't matter. Yeah, well, no, but because it, so they what's have, the point in competitive nature? They have changed the way they do things, obviously, because they don't do that anymore. But I like I like when they do stuff like that because it makes sense because it's supposed to be a competitive. Uh, yeah, but they don't want it to be seen as a sport. So. I know it's it's, <laughs> it's it's that fine line. Yeah. So I think that when if everything they're talking about with what Fox wants to do. SmackDown will turn into or back into that. Right, but if if the whole show is seen as a competitive thing, yeah. you know, it's just like the whole thing with the uh, with the general manager or commissioner thing, mm. and you don't have wrestlers, you know, going up to him like, "Oh, I want this match." No, they're taking it and going, "Oh, you're going in this match." You know, I'm doing it because of my benefit. Not, yeah, you're not sure. coming up to me like like when Foley was mm. GM years ago or commissioner. You actually had people coming up to yeah. him and asking mm-hmm. for matches. Yeah. I just feel like that's such a better way to do it because that way you're giving the wrestlers more incentive yeah, to it, actually absolutely. do what they're doing. Right. Because the, the heel authority figure doesn't really work. <laughs> the face authority figure that Shane's proven oh, time Jesus and time Christ. again doesn't work. So... And Paige has done a pretty good job of being that person. Right, yeah, absolutely. So you can't really complain about it. The problem is no, they it's just, just raw. Love, That's what I'm, yeah. Well, I know, but they, they just love having Shane on TV, too. <laughs> for do. no reason. There's no purpose. He should be on TV just as much as Stephanie is. Mm. And I'm not saying that Stephanie should be on more. I'm saying Shane be, should be on less. Because he's ruining The Miz right now. And everything he does just, like, is crap. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, right now... Let's see what they're going to do with it, see if it runs, you know, with TLC, with AJ versus Daniel Bryan, see where it goes after that uh-huh. till the Rumble. Maybe Shane will do something, but I don't have high hopes. Not Shane, I'm sorry, uh, Miz. Oh, okay. I was yeah. like, what's Shane going to do? <laughs> no. He's still the best in the world. So. Yeah, and they're still playing that up. What? The, I mean, like, this was supposed to be a one-and-done deal. Yeah, I mean, just like so many people court, uh, hated it. Bronze, yeah, uh, the trophy, uh, the greatest Royal Rich, Rumble yeah. belt. <laughs> like, what was the point? You, you had so many people complaining, yeah, and that it was such a stupid tournament because you know, calling it best in the world of only a very small sample size. I yeah, mean, best of eight. Yeah, and two of the best in the world weren't even competing on the show. <laughs> it's like the mixed match challenge all yeah, over again. exactly, <laughs> which completely just like it, it went, went from competitive to. Like, oh, shit, we booked ourselves Both into a corner. Both people in the finals were 0-4 going into the playoff. <laughs> I know. Like, what is that about? And, I mean, the I, I, I 
check when uh, the live feed's going on of how many people are watching it, mm-hmm. and it was at like 70, 80,000 at one point. It didn't go above like 18,000 last night. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I was going to say, like, those, the, it usually is around 40. Yeah. But I guess last night they didn't care. I know I wasn't watching it because no. I because I knew it was going to happen no. and I didn't it didn't matter. You also fell asleep. That too, but I could have turned it on. It wasn't over <laughs> it's yet. It's true. It's true. <clears throat> but it was just terrible, yep. terrible, terrible, yep. terrible. All right, so we did have a title change on Raw. We did, but apparently no one really gives a shit about that because it wasn't big news. Regardless, I of, liked what they did though. I mean, it was fine, but I mean, and it makes a lot more sense. I, I just hope that they don't the AOP don't win the titles back. Well, that, but I mean, you would think that this would be time to kick Maverick to the curb, right? I mean, well, we don't know that they're not going to do. No, that. no, no. But I, I'm just saying that this is the point where yeah, well, we, he cost them a match. We realize that this isn't working. Goodbye, Maverick. You yeah. can go continue to do what you were doing well on yeah. being. It, it, the, it's the whole thing is silly to be. It was, with. but I mean, you make the authors of pain look completely stupid. Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it was Chad Gable and Bobby Roode versus Authors of Pain and Drake Maverick in a handicap match for the titles yep. for whatever reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the AOP pretty much lay out Roode and Gable. And then Maverick goes, ooh, I want to get the pin. I want to get the pin. Mm-hmm. So he tags himself in. He goes into the ring. He showboats a little bit, tries to pin Bobby Roode. And then Bobby Roode just grabs him and uh, rolls him up. And uh, now the... New team yep. champions. So I like what they did. It was entertaining. Uh, oh, it was fine. The crowd gave a good reaction, yeah. which was good to see. Well, but... that's the thing. Because, A, you have the most underrated wrestler in the WWE, who has literally done nothing pretty much the last year and Gable? a half. Yes. Um, and Bobby Roode, who, you know, people like, he's popular at the very least. Yeah, he's, he's not a, a bad wrestler. He's just not very interesting as a face. Well, yeah, that's but the that's problem. the disconnect between NXT and main roster, and somebody's not doing their job there. Yeah, because Vince sees it black and white, where you can't have, or you don't. he doesn't want to have faces right. getting well, cheered. No, I, I mean, heels getting I cheered. I mean, Vince's vision for NXT, I believe, is, all right, you're going to prep them for TV, you're going to have them work in the ring, and you're just going to get ready for regular live TV. Mm-hmm. And Triple H's thing is, no, this is a third brand. I'm going to make this competitive, make yeah. it fun, and things like that. People get over, and... Then you, they get tanks. ruined as soon as they come to the main oh. roster. Yeah. So technically speaking, if... If they did it the way that Vince wanted to, it probably would be better. It, yeah. But, but you can't have the, two people's, vi- you know? Yeah. Because, um, like, NXT, the takeovers are fantastic. Um, yeah. Pretty much without without fail. Um, but you're, really, you're kind of risking that at the, or you're, you're risking the future for the present, right. technically mm-hmm. speaking. Because... If he did do what Vince wanted and have them be generic and just get used to performing, right? Takeovers will be a thing of the past. It's true, but at the same time, you're going to have people who are actually ready to be what they're going mm-hmm. to be on the main roster. You don't have expectations. Well, and- I mean, think about how well Elias has done on the main roster. How many takeovers was he on? <laughs> One, maybe, <laughs> probably. So, but that's that's the thing. But again. The- he did the best. He's done the best. He's no, oh, yeah, yeah. He Hands has down. been the the after after Balor getting called up. Mm-hmm. He has been the most consistent NXT call up because at that point I think um, Braun had already been up. Yeah. Another example of someone who was never on NXT TV but transitioned on the main roster pretty much flawlessly as soon as he got separated from the Wyatt family. Oh, yeah, yeah. Because as soon as that brand split hit, he was good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was the smartest thing they did. Mm-hmm. Um, shit, now I forgot. Oh, uh, but I mean, it's also that, you know, their thinking might be NXT is for the hardcore fan that wants to see. Well, that's why this. it's behind a right, paywall. Right, yeah. Which, it, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, it makes sense. Yeah. It's, maybe it's just not a win-win situation with no. the way they're Mm-mm. doing it. No. no. But then again, having two different people run it with two different visions, yeah. you're never going to get. So, the good news is that Triple H is going to be around longer than Vince is. There's a very good chance Vince could leave as soon as the XFL starts up again. Yeah, it's inter- uh, when is that, 2020, yeah. right? So, there's a very, because 
all the business dealings that he's supposedly been doing mm -hmm. are suggesting that he doesn't plan on sticking See, around right, past there. Right. Because he's selling his stocks, he's doing all this stuff. And he, it seems like with a lot of the booking, he's preparing for like going, because, you, know, you know, that's just how life works is that there's peaks and valleys. Right. Obviously. So he wants to get it as bad as possible. So once it turns around the other way, mm. then all of a sudden stocks go up and everything or viewership goes up. I don't know. We'll see. It's It, it could, it could end. Uh, there's a chance that he's doing this just to be spiteful too. <laughs> or it's just because he's a crazy son of a bitch and just says, you know what? I'm going to do this today. Yeah, I guess Not that's even true. thinking, no thought process, just going out there. I guess that's also Three true. Three hours of sleep a night, right? Something like that. He, he that, doesn't like sneezing. That's yeah. what I do. So. Um, we had a repeat of last week. Uh -huh. Drew McIntyre versus Dolph Ziggler. However, the right man went over this week to build momentum going well, into TLC. Obviously. Hey. Well, uh, Dolph doesn't have a match on no, DLC, so. and <laughs> I think he's been hyping his comedy tour, so he's probably going to go off TV sure. for a little while. Maybe, maybe. he's done. Uh -huh. He's got nothing going on. His no. his uh, his his storylines have been tied up. There's no yeah, no, no, no loose, there's nothing. No loose ends. <clears throat> nope. Um, but yeah, Drew beats up Dolph after the match. Yep, and kind of just solidifies Drew's, I guess, intensity. Um, like we had mentioned earlier, there's a chance that <clears throat> Balor might, or I don't know if we said it or not. No, no, no. We were talking about yeah. it beforehand. Uh, Balor is sick, apparently. What, he got sent, sent home. home. I don't remember. Where were they? Chile? Oh, during their uh, yeah. Latin tour, <clears throat> yes. Right. So he didn't make Raw. There's uh, no guarantee that he will be at TLC. So the question kind of becomes, if he's not, what does Drew do? Right. Um so there's a chance that he could maybe get put into a different match. He could be get yeah, involved in another match. There's still plenty of time left. Put him in the match with Seth and Dean. There you go. That that Have makes all the, the sense title. in the world. Have him win the IC title. Why not? You can have, have a random person. No, you can have De Seth and Dean still fighting because the IC title is kind of not being used. Yeah, Dean know. doesn't care about the title. Yeah, but, but nothing has suggested I know. that he does. You would have thought because we had the TLC as the main event with Seth versus Baron Corbin with the IC title on the line. You would have thought Dean would have come out just that to make sure that Seth, Seth kept had that title, title so yeah. he could win it. Um, to be fair, I don't think anybody thought that Baron Corbin was going to win anyway. No, but. no, because that would have. But <laughs> I mean, there's always that possibility. I guess that's true. Uh, <laughs> um. Oh, just this Naya Ronda stuff just needs to stop. Bad. Um, just Naya just holding on to the whole thing that happened with Becky Lynch. The only thing that really had helped her stay or become relevant in recent times, and mm. it's just like, all right, enough, we get it. No, I, you know what's funny? I think the whole reason why they've been doing this is to get Ronda cheered again. Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess that's. I true. think that's the whole reason is that they put up against the mega heel. Not not necessarily because they're like a Randy Orton type heel, mm. but more of just a like just an unlikable Wait, character. Why are we seeing Tamina in the ring every week? It's a good question. It really is. Like like Ember's just trying her damnedest, and it's just it's good for Ember. Yeah, well, because she's getting wins. Yeah, well, well that and she you know it's she did lose right two weeks ago. I probably, think, probably to, but it was something Tamina? stupid. Yeah. Um, but at least it's showing that she's, you know, capable of carrying someone who's mm -hmm. clearly not qualified to be in the yeah. ring with her. So it's just, uh, it's just not helping Naya at all either. Oh no, 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 no. She's getting buried really bad. Yeah. Um <laughs> so I mean that was pretty much basically all that happened on the Hulu version. Yeah. Well, uh, also, they had Elias versus Leo Rush. We kind yeah, of Yeah, we touched over upon it. it. Yeah. I oh, think the biggest part of it was that Slater was the referee. Right, right, right. And yes. he didn't disqualify Rush, even though Lashley got involved he in the match. He broke up the pin, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so. He was getting thrown around like a small child. Oh, Elias. Yes, he was. Oh, and funny enough, during the, the tag match or the handicap match mm -hmm. for the tag team titles. Yeah. When Rude and Gable threw Drake, Ma Drake oh, over the over the top <laughs> rope, he oh man, he got a lot of hang time. On yeah, that. oh yeah, he that was, flew. That was cool. Wow. Um. Yeah, and then they made a stipulation for the Elias and Lashley match that it's going to be a 
Did TLC? they announce that on the show? Yeah, I think okay. so. It's going to be a TLC match with a guitar hanging. Is that what it was? Yeah. No, or a ladder, a ladder match. match. I'm sorry, a ladder with match. With a guitar suspended yes. above the mm-hmm. ring. What's the difference, to be honest? Yeah, I don't understand how it's going to work, though. Because and it says a guitar will be suspended above the ring, and the first to retrieve it can use it as a weapon. It's so dumb. But the, It's just the same as a weapon on a pole match. Yeah, but at the same time, a ladder match is whoever gets the thing <laughs> hanging above the ring first wins. Doesn't make sense. I don't get it. And if you're going to use a weapon, you have a fucking ladder. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's probably a no-DQ match. All right, but. so... Since we touched upon it last week when we were closing out the show, uh-huh. the uh, TLC match that happened last year that wasn't a TLC match. Uh huh. Remember we were talking about the uh, yeah the the, the so handicap match. Braun versus Corbin is a TLC match. It is. Uh, what are they going to have a a contract hanging over? Probably that would make sense, right? Yeah, because there is a stipulation to the match. Last year there was no, no stipulation. Sti- yeah. I honestly I don't remember how that match <laughs> I went. I don't know how it worked. I, I think Kurt got the pin or something like that. Yeah, I think like so, that. which makes yeah, no sense. Yeah. But I don't know. Maybe if we Google what a tables ladders is a type of match. Okay, let's see. Well, let's continue. I'm gonna see if I can. Learn. All right, I don't even remember what else. Oh, okay. So yeah, since I actually watched it, I braved it and watched it on TV, and you watched the Hulu version. Yeah. Um, we did have Natalia coming out, and she was talking about you know her being a heart and all the hardship and whatnot and the Montreal screw job and everything. And they're trying to push Natalia. And again, I have no interest because they never do anything exciting with her or anything no. like that. No. And she's going to dedicate the match to her father. I don't like when they do this. I don't either. They, um, and we've talked about this before. Adding personal life stuff yeah. doesn't really. And at this point, riot squad comes out with, a table. table and it was covered and then they pulled the cover off and it's got uh i guess a um a like picture. a decal of yeah. uh jim the edville nightheart on the table yeah yep so <laughs> building heat you know I, I just don't get it the funny part is they've done a good job getting heat anyway so what's the oh point? yeah no no absolutely that's um, the point really but if they will stay true to it and Natalia doing the match for her father. She's probably going to go over. I sure shit hope so. Um, <clears throat> and that this does absolutely nothing for Ruby. I mean, what does nothing. Natalia have to prove? You nothing. know, shouldn't the whole point of the veterans to be putting over the newer talent? Mm-hmm. Like, and I, I don't know. I feel like they think they owe Natalia something based off of the way that they treat her. That makes I sense. Yes. Right? Because she keeps on getting put in situations she shouldn't be in. Like, um, when she beat Naomi for the Women's Championship at SummerSlam Summer a couple yeah, of years yeah, ago. Yeah, yeah. Like, th- there was no reason for her that to well, win. it was through the whole, probably, uh, Total Divas thing. <laughs> well, yeah, that's probably the reason why they did it. <laughs> yeah, but, no, no, yeah, I don't know. But it just, it doesn't make any sense. Right. Like, she's she's consistent, but she should really be used... To put over new talent. Yeah, that's she, really she it. She should have... be... What? You have so much young talent that, I mean, she'd probably be better off on SmackDown for that. Because you don't have, you you have a bunch of top people, people and then you know I, I guess you could call them bottom feeders basically. Who on SmackDown? Yeah. Well, I mean, We're talking about uh, like. Really I guess you kind of have your top, middle, and lower. No, it's 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 up and lower. Yeah. No, it's you know Charlotte, Oscar, Becky, uh-huh. Naomi, <laughs> the rest. Um. Yeah, I guess so. I don't know. I I if. I would feel more comfortable actually saying that it's just upper and, and lower yeah, that's and putting Naomi in, in the, the lower. upper. Oh, the upper? No, okay. I put her up that's upper. Fair. That's fair. Naomi's not great on the microphone, but she puts on really good matches. Yeah. So, and especially the the few times that she's actually been given time, because that doesn't really happen anymore, mm-hmm. but her title matches were pretty good. Yeah. No, they were fine. And even, Except when she defended against Lana multiple times. Yeah, but that wasn't her fault. <laughs> no, but I mean, that hurts her reign, you know? It does. But and then she had a thing with, right, Natalia? And that's who she lost it to, right? Yes. Yeah. So, but again, that wasn't off of the wrestling that was off. Yeah, of, no, no, no. The, the booking. But generally, that's what our major complaints are. The booking. Yeah, exactly. Don't make no sense. No, not, not all the time. All right. So um, I guess we should head over to SmackDown. Well, did we even talk about the main event? Oh, that Seth Rollins beat Corbin in a TLC match because... We I don't know why we need to put a TLC match on TV a week before the TLC pay per view. 
Ratings! So what, so they can drop lower and we can have the lowest third hour ever? Yeah, I know. I'm, I'm just saying that that, that <laughs> was mean, their goal. I mean, um, and it, you know, it's Corbin. Yeah, no one cares. No one cares. The, uh, again, the biggest thing that came out of this is that it kind of... It showed that Slater was on Corbin's side, right? You know, begrudgingly, mm -hmm. he didn't yeah, like it. What Seth was climbing the ladder and he pushed them off the ladder yep. or whatever. Um, so that that's probably the biggest thing. Yeah, that came out of the but match. I mean, it's funny because back what's it? in the day, yeah, back in the day, I don't know, a year and a half ago, whenever it was, maybe it was just a year. He was probably just a year ago. If you tell me what it is, I could probably when, tell you when. Yeah, it was. it was last year when Corbin was on SmackDown when he won the U.S. title and beat AJ clean, and mm -hmm. it, there was some promise with him. Yeah, and well, then he won Money this, in the Bank, and then yeah, all of a sudden he just well, actually, tapered that was off after Money in the Bank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. About it. yeah. Tapered off. He wasn't showcased in the ring. He was just all of a sudden authority figure yeah. and. I don't know. Uh, Corbin shouldn't be. He's he's got too much exposure, yeah. and he's too bland of a character to carry. Because like, even if you had Alexa Bliss, like she's more charismatic and more dynamic. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. So she would be better in the heel authority figure than Corbin is. Yeah. It's, well, it's like they they didn't finish their project with Corbin, and then they put him into a new you know a yeah. new role, and he's you know still not sure which. Well, PC, because he face. wrestles so often that a lot of because that on top of the 50 50 50 50 booking mm -hmm. where he's losing matches then he just makes him look like an idiot right yeah so because if he was winning match like if you want everything yeah and but not because he was better but because he had a way to win whether it be this match is now no dq yes <laughs> but he can't lose these matches right i know i and I know doing that makes the people who's wrestling look bad, like Balor, mm -hmm. like Elias, but it adds to the, I guess, the legitimacy of him. Right. So I'd rather sacrifice a little bit on Finn Balor's, I guess, credentials if he's losing to a, a guy who can't lose. Right. Whereas opposed to if he's losing to a yeah. guy who shouldn't I guess win. it's true. <clears throat> well, and then they played it, you know, all right. You've had your fun with your power. Now, if you win this match, you get to keep it. Yeah. Otherwise, uh, uh, in the Steph dumpster, you Stephanie go. Stephanie has done a good job with this because she's suggesting he's not doing a good right. job. But then again, the he's train still went got, off the tracks yeah. because Braun was hurt. So yeah. it kind of hurt the whole... So it's unfortunate the way that things work out, but that's 90% yeah. of the time yeah, how it's things true, go. It's true, and it's a thing, like I said, 52 weeks a year. Well, it's a little less this year. They're not doing live shows on christmas or new year's oh Eve. they're not doing it this no. year no they they're did. taping um that's I sad. Think friday that's sad yeah i don't care yeah but, you're gonna watch the well, version anyway yeah well it's just funny because the last two years they did it i think <laughs> raw was christmas last year right i think so yeah because it's gonna be christmas uh, smackdown would be christmas this yeah. year yeah so it's weird but yeah. it makes sense yeah, no. I um, think they tried it, and the attendance probably wasn't where they thought yeah, it was going to be or not, wanted it, it to be. It's sucky for, you know. Everybody. It's yeah, it's dumb. true. Right. Yeah. So. But, all right. So we're done with Raw? Yes. Okay. Moving over to the A show. Smack diddly down. Yeah. Um, so it was advertised before the show went on the air. We were going to get Daniel Bryan versus Mustafa Ali. Mm-hmm. Um, again... I don't know if they said it in the article, if there was a reason the match was made. Oh, no, I didn't read the article. I didn't either. I, I saw, just I saw, saw it. Thing. Um, but yeah, Dan Ryan comes out, hippie speak, blah, blah, mm -hmm. blah. Using um, that uh, leather belt, though. Well, <laughs> you know, we got to ignore some things. Uh, Mustafa Ali comes out, and I honestly have no idea what he said. Oh, no, he just said, you know, Daniel, what happened to you? You were the guy that gave us the opportunity to say that anything is possible, so on and so forth. You know, it's a typical face promo yeah, crowd got behind they were happy to see him mm -hmm. um and then they had the match yeah and it was a good match yeah i mean i it pisses me off that the first match always suffers this picture in picture bullshit you watch it on the computer so you don't see well no it, it's on there now. oh is it, it wasn't on there the first I gotcha. few times um but i also i also watched it on tv oh. i have the cable box now. i gotcha yeah. They so. did a Spanish fly during the picture in picture. Yeah. Like I, I also like when they show stuff that happened during the or before the commercial mm -hmm. as like a recap. Or oh replay. yeah, yeah, yeah. So because like uh, you'll miss the stuff that happens, but I'm not talking about like 
the picture picture thing i'm talking about like when they don't show it right it's like oh this happened before the commercial you don't get to see anything that happened <laughs> no. during the commercial nope but um but obviously daniel bryan won mm-hmm. um i think it was a title match anyway what was that no, no 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 so no but i mean ollie had a good showing yeah he was one of the people we always or at least i thought should be represented in a regular you know main roster well wrestler versus cruiserweight if they were going to do it they seem to be doing what i had been suggesting all along and Mm -hmm. trying to incorporate them into the main roster i mean you get it's not hard you get a flash of these guys you're like oh i like what i see oh you can go to 205 and watch it it's on the network Mm -hmm. it's that simple like why has it taken because what is it almost two years now uh probably yeah if not yeah yeah yeah. because it started after the brand split right yeah um but yeah it and weren't the screws rates supposed to be part of raw they are <laughs> but like when they were on raw but subjected to being together still that kind of hurt mm. um but yeah, having i even having um the revival versus the right. house party yeah, yeah, yeah. it it still is better than not having them or right. having them have fight each other yeah because they feel they feel secluded and everything leo rush being with bobby lashley despite the fact that nobody cares about bobby lashley is probably the best thing leo rush could possibly be doing right now yeah at least it gets him you know exposure. he's on tv every <clears throat> single week <clears throat> he shows off his abilities but they don't plug him really much as a 205 live wrestler no do they? but he he still yeah. is one yeah but now they showed him in a match so yeah you're like oh He's a he's wrestler. Capable. Oh, yeah. He, yeah, right. He's a wrestler. Oh, he he certainly doesn't really look like one when he's wearing the suit. Yeah. Um, so, but th- they're starting to move in the right direction with yeah, that, it, which is funny. It took too long, as I guess. usual, like most things. Yeah. And, and at the pay-per-views, Buddy Murphy versus Cedric Alexander was You're, fantastic. Right, and that's going to happen at yes. TLC. So it, it's good because they're finally in a position where they're not, they really got a, a foothold mm-hmm. on what they want to do. They well, we had, figured it out on 205 Live. Right. And now they're bringing it to the table. So, and, to be fair, I, I like the fact that they waited a little bit. All right. Because if the stuff that was happening at the beginning was on TV oh, immediately. Oh, yeah. No, 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 no. I didn't mean immediately, but the fact that it's two years later. Yeah, but I, I think that now that they've established. I mean, I guess the fact we had Enzo on there. Yeah. yeah Neville. People who have already been on the main right, roster right, right. didn't really help. Yeah. So, but what were you going to say? Kendrick. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I mean, we saw at uh, Survivor Series, they had the Cruiserweight title match. And that was the first time, I believe, it was showcased on a pay-per-view outside of the Super Showdown. On the main on the, card. Yeah, on the main card. So they were obviously giving, I guess, the fans Yeah, the they glimpse. should be on the main card, and, too. Yeah. But, I mean, that Buddy Murphy-Ali match was good. Mm-hmm. The crowd hated it at first. They were giving it nothing. And then all of a sudden, by the end, they were... Mm-hmm. They were into it. So yeah, I, I, mean, I cannot, I still cannot wrap my head around the fact that Buddy Murphy is as good as he is. What, just because he wasn't used in NXT that yeah. way? Like, well, I, again, we just, when we started watching, he was in the middle of his title run, mm-hmm. the tag title run, and yeah. then he just went into Obscurity. the black hole. Well, the biggest problem was that Alexa Bliss was the focal point in Blake and Murphy. Yeah. That's the biggest problem. Because when you have a tag team whose valet or manager is the person that gets the most attention, mm-hmm. you kind of... Which is funny, because like, you looked at uh, Enzo and Cass, and Carmella was just kind of in the background. Yes. But to be fair, en- uh, Enzo is a little more charismatic than uh, Blake and Murphy. Yeah. Oh, so. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, they were Jeff definitely just kind of a couple generic guys. And yeah. Yeah, you had Bliss, who did most of the cheap work and stuff like that like the manager Mm -hmm. generally does yeah so Um, but yeah no like you said uh i think you said daniel bryan went over yes he won with a heel hook hook. yeah um we saw he did a good job selling Mm -hmm. he he, he did his job yeah he seemed confident in his promo and mm -hmm. that that's good that's what you what you need yeah and he wasn't wearing a shirt no that was weird yeah looked like uh seth rollins a little bit but which is funny because he's actually taller than Daniel Bryan. Yeah, well, you know, yeah, he's just sense. a little skinnier. Yeah. Uh, so you know, we we talked about this before we started recording that SmackDown suffered from a great, a really good opening and closing, and then kind of crap in the middle. Yeah, some crap. I mean, um, I, I well, I think if SmackDown and Raw are good, this show would have been passable. 
But because of how bad, bad they've been lately, it's been a little more critical. I guess so. I because I think if this was in the middle of a stretch of consistent, mm-hmm. consistent quality shows, I don't think we would have thought anything of this no, show. Um, I mean, the main event was very good. No, no, no. I mean, anything Just, bad. Oh, uh, I think that this would have been a perfectly fine SmackDown. I gotcha. If it was during the course of time when Raw and SmackDown were both good. Yeah, but I guess you're more cr- critical yes. now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, all right, so we'll talk about the rap battle first. For some reason, Seamus and Cesaro challenged the Usos. Yes. And the New Day was going to be the judges. Judges, yes. So the New Day comes out wearing different color suits. Mm-hmm. Um, the bar come out wearing red track suits. Mm-hmm. And then the Usos just wear their regular clothes. With Seamus sporting a uh, Scotty Too Hotty like hat except it wasn't a bucket hat it was just a hat cut to fit his mohawk which was kind of it was great yeah um so (laughs) the i get uh, the bar go first yeah yeah and then you know it was bad they uh they pretty much just copied ice ice baby from vanilla ice it was fantastic um and then the usos go and then they put them to shame which is not a surprise and then everybody fights yeah and then the bar stand tall yeah um i think it was uh bubba ray (laughs) I refuse to call him Bully Ray. But anyway, he was uh, talking about saying that they should have made this match a TLC match. It would have made if, sense. If any team could surpass, or if any trio could surpass what they did with oh, Edge and Christian Lori, so it would be these three teams. We said, I think last year for WrestleMania, that it should be the New Day, the Usos, and it was another team. I don't think it was the bar, because mm-hmm. the bar wasn't on SmackDown yet, but it should be a TLC match for WrestleMania. Yeah. I don't remember who sense. the third team was. But then again, it, you know, you kind of kill these matches with doing... Maybe it, was, maybe it was the Bludgeon Brothers. That's possible. Yeah, that would mm. make sense. And yeah. it would have been good. Right. Because they, they, cause that was before the Bludgeon Brothers got ruined by their stupid booking. Man. You think they'll come back as a team? No. no. Certainly not as the Bludgeon Brothers. They'll probably come back as... The Wyatt again. Yeah. <laughs> or at, no. at least the uh, Luke no. and Eric. Which is funny because Wyatt came back at... The Starcade, and we haven't returned. seen him, and that took place in what beginning of November? No, maybe it was it had to be like a month. It was right before. Was it before Survivor, Survivor Series? Series? It was like the seventeenth or something. No, seventeenth of Survivor Series. It was the twenty fourth. Oh yeah, yeah, it's you're a week right. after. No, it feels like so long. Yeah, or it aired a week after. Yeah, um, we're still getting this garbage with Miz and Shane. Yeah, is, I'll get it. Uh, like this is obviously not. As bad as the Kevin Owens, Sami Zayn stuff, no. but it could possibly lead to that territory. It also takes less time than that did, because that was like the main event. Oh, yeah, that's true. Um, and then you drag Daniel Bryan through the mud with it. Mm-hmm. AJ was involved. Yeah. So, and that was during AJ's title run. It wreaked havoc. Yeah, it did. Yeah. It's like a forest fire. Yep, all pretty much. Place. And again, like we talked about earlier, it was all over the... Well, it has to do with that stupid trophy. Yeah. Because uh, the Miz, Miz is two-thirds the... best in the world, yeah. so he claims. He wants to team with Shane so they could be the best tag in the world or something like that. Yeah. Um, the Miz calls out two local wrestlers because he wants to have another match. Um, and then the two local guys just beat up on Shane. And then Shane, being the best wrestler in the world, is able to uh, oh take out God, both of them. It was so bad. There was nothing that looked good about this. Nah. He's an old man. Yeah, but I mean, I don't know. The punches in the corner were terrible. Yeah. His float over DDT that he didn't even hit. Mm-hmm. <sighs> it's Shane. Again, though, with the authority figure. In, in, he shouldn't in, be involved. Uh, yeah, involved. No. Shane should not be on TV. Certainly not every week. No. Um, but I guess because Paige is there, he's not needed. I don't, I don't no, get why he's need problem. both. Yeah. Because I think they're like, okay, Paige will be the authority figure. That leads Shane to being able to be an active wrestler, which is what he wants to do. I have no problem with him wanting to do it, but they should think better and say, no, it's a bad idea. Bad. Yeah. Because stay in the back. You go in the basement with the rest of the SmackDown tag division. That's where you go. <laughs> yes. There you go. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so Shane manages to win. Um, and then after the oh, match. It's the triangle? I don't even yeah. know. That's, yeah. That's what they claimed it so to be. Bad. So, um, after the commercial, I think it cuts back to the two indie guys going to Paige and asking to get paid. They said you were giving us $5,000. Right. Rips up their contracts. Yeah. It's like, Paige, I said no such thing. Goodbye. Get out. Yep. And then 
we create more tension between Shane and the Miz later on. Yeah. I guess Miz tries to bury the hatchet. Uh, kind of. I don't know. Well, he apologizes for yeah. what he did. Right. Because the Shane was getting mad at him. Because mm-hmm. he brought a referee out and everything like that. It was non-sanctioned. Yeah. It, was, it was dumb. But yeah, Shane, uh, the Miz still wants to be a team. Mm-hmm. But Shane's like, nah. Nope. They're Not happening. It's going to happen, man. Yeah. Uh, Gonna they're happen. gonna fight that's for sure yeah but if they Sad. drag this out wrestling it better not we're be. in I'm trouble be so mad all right um orton comes out plays I mean, oh, videos I'm, 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 of I'm, I'm, everything I'm, I'm, that he's done what like we were talking earlier about how hard it is to write a three-hour show every and week. then they put in filler like this well no like who actively is like, oh, yeah, we want Shane into this storyline? You're telling me the writers are thinking that? No, no it's Shane. It's, yeah, of I course. I said that. No, I know. But I'm just, it, it, it's just mind-boggling. Yeah. It's Shane saying, I want to be an active wrestler. We don't need me yeah. as an authority figure. Right. That's what he does. It's just, <laughs> just trying to wrap my head around this, it. This That's isn't, it. This isn't them... This isn't them going, okay, they, we think this is a good storyline. Right. This is them writing a show, and then Shane going, oh, where's my spot? <laughs> Yeah, they go through everybody in line, and all of a sudden yeah. he's at the back of the line. Like, oh shit, I guess the boss's son, we can't leave him out. Yeah. All right, Shane, what do you want to do? Yep. And then he's the Miz is sweating. Yeah. The Miz is the only one who doesn't have anything going on right now. So, like, okay, we'll stick you with him. Oh, so, yeah, Orton shows video packages, everything he did to Mysterio. And then when he's done showing them. Which makes no sense. It should be doing it during the video packages because Orton's not paying attention. Right. But Rey Mysterio comes out, starts beating up with the chair. That's yeah. It. This was just hype their chair match. Yeah. Yes. Which it, it'll probably be a good match. Oh, I'm sure it will be. Yeah, it'll be fun. Well, because it's not Kalisto versus Baron Corbin, so no. <laughs> which which is the same template. But that was good. I like that. It match. was it was over the top. It was better than it it should have. Yes. Been. It was over the top. That's what the biggest thing with 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 it was. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we had Jeff Hardy and Rusev versus Shinsuke Nakamura and Samoa Joe. Yeah, this was them just taking two separate feuds and putting it together. Yeah, you so guys, neither, good. none of you are going to be on this TLC pay per view. So is that true? In, yeah, I don't think any of those matches are happening. Originally, I think Joe and Hardy was supposed to happen, or Rusev. No, it was probably going to be. That's hilarious. Yeah, right. Because you have Rey Mysterio and Randy Orton an inconsequential match. Going on above the uh, US, US title. title. Right. I mean, Shinsuke, I can't believe he won it back in Extreme Rules. That's when he won it? That's when what he, I think they said. When he kicked said. Jeff in the nuts? I think that's well, what they said Well, Jeff won it at night. WrestleMania, didn't he? No. He won it... Jinder won it at Mania, and then Jeff won it oh, on oh, the was, shake-up. Okay. Yeah, it makes sense. And then <laughs> Jeff dropped it almost immediately. Yeah. Um, yeah it is funny. That they have Natalia versus Ruby Riot, but they won't like, have yeah, Shinsuke versus it, Rusev. Like, if you're gonna just shit on a title, I mean, this is how you're gonna do it. Yeah, you might as well just it hasn't been defended it. on pay per view. No, maybe once or twice. Yeah, maybe Hell, Hell in a Cell. I think there was a match between. Who the hell did he? It was Shinsuke versus. Oh, okay, I'm starting to think. Because Jeff faced Randy Orton in Hell, Hell in a, a Cell. Cell. Um. Uh, Survivor Series, he faced Seth. Yeah, that wasn't a title match. Uh, I hate doing this. That's right. Crown Jewel, he wasn't there, I don't think. Yeah. No, because it was mostly the... World title, blah, blah, blah. Yep, he defended against Rusev on the pre-show. Oh, okay, yes, that's right, that's right. So that's one. Because he certainly didn't do it on SmackDown. He wasn't at Evolution. No, obviously not. I don't have a choice. (laughs) Uh, I don't think he defended at a super showdown. Yeah. No. Mm-mm. Yeah, no. Okay. Hell in a Cell. Yeah, it had to be Hell in a Cell. Hell in a Cell, I'm almost positive he did. Uh, just, he did not. He did not. Okay. He and wasn't even on Hell in a Cell. Before that was what, SummerSlam? Uh, yes. And Dad, I don't think he defended it on either. No. Oh, yep. yeah. Jeff he, Hardy. He beat Jeff. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, he defended it maybe five times over the course of his... Yeah. In, in actual matches, mind you. Right. I'm not counting... But it, well, the whole mid-card on SmackDown yeah, it's is it's a just, joke. It's, it's non-existent. It's, it's the old people. Jeff and... Or not Jeff. Jeff, 
Randy. Joe, Randy, and Shinsuke. Not Shinsuke, and right. uh, Mysterio. Yeah. And every, everybody else is kind of, like, not there. Like, the fact that Shin, uh, Shinsuke has that title is, it doesn't, doesn't make, make sense. sense. Yeah. But again, there's nobody there. Yeah, I can't give it to anybody because no. Ty hasn't been on TV. I mean, you have Bruce Benjamin now hasn't been on TV. Ace. Yes, he has to be. Yeah, yeah, no, he is. Yeah. Well, actually, it's more of whatever he, whoever he's feuding with. I guess that's true. Which is dumb, but I guess it kind of makes sense because I don't really care as it long as matter. Rusev is around. Yeah. Because him and Lana as hate faces is the same as him and Lana mm, as heels. heels. It's just it it's just who he's facing. That's it. Yeah. It, so. Um. And then we had the uh, WrestleMania rematch. Well, just real quick, Rusev uh, pinned oh, uh, okay. Shinsuke. I thought you did say that. <laughs> yeah, no, we got carried away on yeah. things because uh, Rusev actually got a pin. It's weird. I like the I, the ending sequence was pretty good. Yeah, well, Shinsuke was going for the Kinshasa, yeah, and then Rusev, Rusev kicks beat him. him with- that happens every so often. Where they'll be panning on somebody else, and yeah. all of a sudden Rusev kicks someone. That's true. So, but it was good. I liked it. Yeah, it was fine. Did what it needed to do, especially for an inconsequential tag yeah, team match. On yeah, which four Smack guys in feuds that, that aren't going to be showcased yeah, at I the mean, next pay per view. Was it last two weeks ago when you had the Jeff Hardy twenty years thing, right? And, and then, then that Joe was a big deal. Out. And they did it last week as well when Jeff was wrestling a match, right? Yeah, Joe cost. Him oh yeah, a match. when Joe did his uh, was PSA. it against Shinsuke? No, it was Orton. Probably Orton. Yeah, it was against. Yeah, yeah, because we were like, why the hell did we get another yes. rematch mm-hmm. of this crap? Yeah. Yeah, because I said, what was the point in Orton getting a win over Jeff? Yes. This should have been used for younger times. Yep, 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 just... yep. Um, but yeah, no. All right, back to the main event. Main event. WrestleMania rematch. Oscar versus Charlotte. Becky was at ringside. Yeah, was she on commentary? No. I she didn't just think sitting so. there. I know she came just out. Just chillings. Um, but, you know, this match happened mm-hmm. because of... Uh, well, last week. last week at the contract signing for TLC, right? Didn't they have a contract signing? No. Oh no, it was just them announcing the. They TLC were they match. were talking about the match. Everyone oh, said really they were going to win. I don't think it was contract. a contract I'm signing. I'm pretty sure it was. Either way, it doesn't matter. Um, Charlotte and um, Oscar teamed together, mm-hmm. and then I think Charlotte cost them the match, and then they started, they started fighting. Right, right. And that's when yeah. this happened, mm-hmm. or this was uh, yeah. made. <clears throat> Um, Charlotte, I guess, gives up and says, that's it. Grabs a kendo, kendo stick, stick, starts beating up Asuka. She gets DQ'd. Then she goes after Becky. Uh, Asuka eventually gets the kendo stick and beats, beats the shit out of Charlotte. Her yeah. back looked terrible. Yeah. So uh, Becky Asuka got a couple up, of hits, too. Yes. Um, but uh, Asuka ends up on top, standing on top of the mm-hmm. announcer's table with the kendo stick in her yeah. hand going, yeah. So we know she's not winning at TLC. <laughs> eh, I don't know <laughs> it's about that. It's still a possibility. <laughs> so, uh, But no, overall, the match was really good, which is not a surprise because no. the two that were in it. But they had a couple of good sequences, like uh, what did Charlotte go for the spear and then Asuka changed it into, uh, was it the Asuka lock? I know or? there was a few times. Oh, that was when she went for the moonsault. She then, countered into the Asuka lock yeah. at least twice, I yeah. think. Yeah, it was a couple of good spots. And yeah. the Both women work well together. Mm-hmm. There is definitely a possibility that this match happens at WrestleMania again. Uh, it would make sense. You have you have a reason for it to happen. Mm-hmm. Now, this was the right way to book it. Yep. You did a good job. Mm-hmm. And, and now you have a heel uh, Charlotte instead of a face Charlotte. Right. That's true. So this could even be like yeah, a stipulation Oscar, match. She's definitely a crowd favorite. Mm-hmm. Mixed match challenge easily. Well, she was partnered with The Miz. So. Yeah. So I, I think that that pairing was probably the one of the better ones that they could have come up with. It was different. Well, yeah, because you moved the mouse and then it went dark. <laughs> it went black, yeah. yeah. So... Um, but yeah, that was that was SmackDown in a nutshell. Yeah, so raw bad SmackDown, decent. Yeah, and uh, the mixed match challenge. What it was, Oscar and The Miz versus Truth and Carmella. Carmella, um, Carmella and Truth won. Yep. But we knew that because Oscar already had a match. Yeah. In the TLC. Well, yeah, because Miz pulled Oscar in front of him when Carmella was gonna super kick him, mm-hmm. and then Oscar said, "No, no, no." Yeah. And mm-hmm. beat the crap out of The Miz. Yeah. And then left. And then I don't. I didn't watch it, but they because Balor was out. They, so Apollo they, Cruz filled in. Yeah, they replaced. which you know what I'll give them credit because we already had something going on between Jinder and Apollo, so kind of made sense. It kind of made sense. They at least inserted the right person. True. 
and they don't have that many options. I don't know who else they would have put in there. Yeah, because everyone else has either been in and taken out, or yeah, it could have been Titus, I guess, if he's even around. Who? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it was Apollo and Bailey versus Jinder and Alicia Fox mm-hmm. again. Well, actually, I can't even say again because none of them have matches at TLC now. Nope. Because Balor was the one with the mm-hmm. match. Yeah, which was, I was like, oh, maybe they could change this around. But I guess they're going to still go with the heel face <laughs> That's dynamic. fine. That's it fine. didn't really matter. It, if anything, it just makes me feel more comfortable about who the match. Yeah. Because well, I know who I want to win. Oh, so, duh. Yeah. Um, it's obvious. Yeah. So, anyway, now Jinder and Alicia will be facing Carmella and Mark. Truth. Yep. And... That'll be on the pre-show. It should be. But, I mean, the fact that it was so dumb that they even announced the 30th spot in the Royal Rumble for this. I still think that they figured out or they... They, they screwed came, up. No. I think that this was the plan. Really? Yes. And I think what... And I, I watched a lot of stuff, and I think a lot of people are agreeing with the sentiment mm-hmm. that they're doing this for one spot. They did this entire thing... Truth's going to come out in the women's room. Yes, that's <laughs> one million percent the only reason why they had oh, the crap, stipulation. Oh, rumble. Yes, that's probably why they have the stipulation. I wouldn't be surprised. Right? If that's the reason, I'm on board with it. Because I, and I'm not the only one who thinks that. I've heard it at least in two it's other. It's not one of your crazy theories? No, it's not because it makes a lot of sense because it's something that they would do. <laughs> it's true. So and it's something that we're surprised he didn't do last year because mm. I think that we probably said we thought he was going to come out in the battle royal for evolution too. that too so <laughs> it's not a surprise when he came out with the ladder during oh, a royal amazing. rumble was fantastic so <laughs> even if it's predictable it's still uh, fun to watch man. so it, you, they're utilizing him correctly this is what you're supposed to use your 50 year old veterans for yeah who moves around like a 20 year old but that's besides the point yep that's it yeah. all right we're over 50 minutes right oh, now. oh god yeah that's too long so um yeah thanks for checking out our video yes if you liked what you saw here please like share and subscribe bye bye